Welcome to Perimenopause Hair. This video is about problems pooing. It's very common that this question comes up in the group. So what we're going to discuss in this video is constipation and the type of laxatives that you would use to deal with that. And not all laxatives are the same. The two that I'm going to discuss in relation to constipation are stool softeners and stimulant laxatives. We'll talk about diarrhea. We'll talk about period diarrhea, which is the type of diarrhea women get before and during their periods. And we'll be talking about alternating constipation and diarrhea, hemorrhoids and irritable bowel syndrome. And the best type of laxatives to use in that situation, which are called bulk forming laxatives. So as you can see, not all laxatives are the same. We'll be talking about which are appropriate to use in what situation. Okay, so let's go. General advice about constipation. In terms of avoiding it, make sure that you change your lifestyle in terms of the things that you're eating and drinking. You need to drink lots of water because the general problem that you have with constipation is that your poo becomes very hard and very compacted in your bowel, which makes it um, painful and difficult to move. You also need to start eating more fibre and roughage. We'll look at what foods contain fibre and roughage. Fruit juices can also help, and we'll look at which ones of those you can drink. Just a reminder, keto diets can cause this problem because many keto diets completely ban carbohydrates and of course fiber and roughage are carbohydrates. So you might like to look at revising your keto diet if that's the case. Progesterone, either your own or progesterone that you're taking in any format can also cause your digestive transit to slow down. So basically the food isn't moving through your body at the same rate. And that can also cause constipation. Women tend to notice this in the second half of their cycle naturally, but of course, prescribed progesterones can also cause it. So looking at sources of fiber, beans are a very popular one. Breakfast cereals, what I'm showing you is um, shredded wheat mini ones. And those are really good for helping you to go. Lentils and other pulses act in a very similar way to the beans. Things like corn and plenty of fruit and veg too will help to keep you regular. When it comes to the fruit juices, orange juice is very popular. Now, of course, these fruit juices contain a lot of sugar, which might not be a good thing if you're diabetic or have type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance or any of those kind of problems. So what you can do is dilute it with water. But with the orange, you need to get the type of orange that comes with the bits in because that adds to the fiber intake. Orange contains a flavanol called norengin that can help get things moving along in your guts. Pear juice, um, that contains vitamins, fiber, and something called sorbitol. The old classic is prune juice. Now that's rich in bulk forming fiber, sorbitol and vitamins. And also one that people don't think of a lot is pineapple that contains an enzyme called bromelain, which eases constipation, bloating and cramps. So all of these will also help you to go. Of course, some people have a problem because medicine they're taking, whether it's um, progesterone or other things, can mean that they have a chronic problem with constipation. And really, it's better to sort that out than have it long term. So really, if you ask me, the best laxative for this situation is a stool softener. Um, I suppose one of the medicines I ought to mention is um, ferrous sulfate, the type of iron that is the best one to take for anemia. You may have to resort to taking a stool softener in those circumstances too. 
Stool softeners have a very gentle action and basically they allow more water to pass into the bowel and they soften the poo, which makes it easier for you to pass. They're a bit slow acting, so you might notice they take a, a couple of days to work. Some of the types here, lactulose, docusate sodium and macrogol are just a few of the types. If you're not sure which type of laxative is a stool softener, don't be afraid to ask a pharmacist for help and advice. That's their job. They shouldn't feel embarrassed and you're paying for something. Uh, it's a business transaction. You know, they want your trade at the end of the day. So don't be afraid to ask for their advice. That's what they do for a living. A lot of people, when they think of laxatives, think of what is known as a stimulant laxative like X-lax. These are not so gentle. I don't recommend them at all. Not unless you're in a real jam with your constipation and you know, you've had it for a number of days and you're in a bit of a pickle. The best idea really is to start with the softener type of um, laxative that we just discussed before, the stool softener, and take that for a few days just to make sure that your stool is a bit softer before you take a stimulant laxative. Um, what a stimulant laxative does is it makes you really want to go to the toilet. So it um, actually makes your guts really cramp. So, you know, it's like, oh, God, I've got to go now, that type of feeling. And of course, if your stool has become very dry and you're having trouble um, passing it, then having something that makes the cramping that you might feel from the constipation worse, but you can't actually evacuate the stool is, you know, not going to help much anyway. The types that I'm talking about are Senna, Bicycodil, and don't forget about magnesium. Magnesium in the old days was sold as milk of magnesia as a laxative. And we have a lot of women in the group are taking magnesium because they've heard about it being an alternative remedy for menopause. And they discover that they're or well, they don't realize that it's causing their problems with diarrhea and tummy ache and stuff. But actually, magnesium is one of these laxatives. They're not very gentle. Um, if you can avoid them, if at all possible, I think that's the best thing to do. And they're not good to take on a regular basis. Now, this slide on diarrhea is just a, a quick one, really. I'm not going to get into it in too much detail. If you have an attack, of diarrhea. This is really what I'm going to talk about. But in general, if you are prone to sudden attacks of diarrhea, try to eat regularly and learn what your dietary triggers are for attacks of diarrhea. For example, it might actually be eating some of the things that we've spoken about earlier in terms of relieving constipation, things like lots of fruits. They might give you diarrhea. Uh, try and eat more fiber. You'll see why this actually makes sense for both diarrhea and constipation as we go along. Eating more fiber is really very much the key to solving both of these problems. Keto diets, although they can cause constipation, they can also cause diarrhea for the same reason. Because there's no roughage, either the poo gets really hard and dry or it just gets runny um, with no shape to it because there's no bulk or roughage in the stool. So actually it can cause both ends of the spectrum. If you have an attack of diarrhea, such as you have um, a tummy bug or something, remember to replace your electrolytes and fluids. We do have a separate video about electrolytes, which is included in the um, leg twitching and cramping one. But basically something like Pedialyte is something that was always useful to have in your house. And you can get like these little um, cartons full of soluble pills, basically. If you've had an attack of sickness and diarrhea, then the best diet to recover with, you want to keep the foods really simple when you start eating again. So the brat diet is popular, banana, rice, applesauce, toast, nothing that's too challenging, nothing too rich, um, nothing spicy at all. 
once again, don't forget magnesium is a laxative and it can cause cramping and diarrhea. If you're going to take magnesium as a menopause remedy, then start on a low dose. Keep to that dose for at least three or four days until you are sure of the consequences on your um, gastrointestinal tract. There's a really marvellous probiotic called Saccharomyces boulardii. And if you have an attack of diarrhea when you're overseas, this is a probiotic that isn't really similar to any of the other strains, the lactobacillus strains. It really stands on its own and it's an excellent thing to have in stock. Period diarrhea, we have a completely separate video on this topic, but just to go back over it. Period diarrhea is caused by the release of a substance called prostaglandins that makes your uterus start to contract and cramp, which makes your period start. So this is released in the 48 hours before your period begins and it causes the unpleasant cramping in your uterus that gets your period started. But it doesn't stay put where it should. It can leach into the bowel and that's what causes your um, intestines to start cramping as well as your uterus. You can actually treat this quite easily with aspirin or ibuprofen. These medicines are called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. There's all sorts of different types, but these act directly on those prostaglandins, which is known in medicine as substance P. And the other things to try, if you're in the UK or Canada, you can get a medicine called buscopan, which treats IBS, and it contains an ingredient that's an antispasmodic. So buscopan is actually sold for IBS, but it's also really handy for um, stopping menstrual cramps. And of course, it helps bowel cramps too. So that's really helpful. Wild yam pills, if you don't have access to buscopan, if you live in America, it can be hard to get. Wild yam pills called diosgenin are pretty much the same. They are also antispasmodic and not to be confused with progesterone. They don't actually work like that, although many people get confused that they do. So that's buscopan and that is what you can expect wild yam root tablets to look like. So alternating constipation and diarrhea, hemorrhoids and irritable bowel. Um, this chart, you may have seen it before, it's called the Bristol stool chart and it shows you what the ideal type of poo is. So type three or four are basically what you call normal. People who've got alternating constipation and diarrhea, um, they basically alternate from the first two types to the type that is more loose and diarrhea-y. So the way to deal with this, in this situation, what you're really looking for is a predictable poo on a daily basis that isn't too hard and isn't too soft. One thing to remember is that hemorrhoids are not just aggravated by constipation. Now, most people think that hemorrhoids are caused by um, constant constipation constipation because actually pushing so much in order to um, try and go for a poo is what causes the hemorrhoids to appear but actually if you're having loose stools two or three times a day then actually passing so much poo actually aggravates the skin around the anus too so uh, <laughs> diarrhea is just as bad for hemorrhoids as constipation is so what you're looking for is that, you know, the ideal poo that isn't too hard and isn't too soft. And there is one ideal option for all of these complaints. And that is known as a bulk forming laxative. And this just guarantees a consistent type of poo on a daily basis. You do have to take it all of the time, I'm afraid. And... A bulk forming laxative is composed of roughage. Um, the classic one is called psyllium husk. It also goes by a different name. And basically, you mix this with water and drink it on a daily basis. Now, your body can't actually digest much of this psyllium husk. It passes straight through you and it doesn't have 
hardly any calorific value. So really, it's ideal if you're doing keto. I think it's better for your health with keto if you do include some beans or, or pulses and roughage of that kind. But you can't always persuade people. So it may be that psyllium husk is the best that they can do. The roughage basically from this psyllium husk makes hard poo softer and it makes your watery poo denser. So you end up with a more consistent type of poo that's easy to pass. So the sort of brands that you can get in terms of bulk forming laxatives, fiber gel is a popular one in the UK. You can get lemon or orange flavor and you need to mix the sachet with a glass of water. Metamucil is a popular one in the States. It's a similar type of thing, mainly orange flavor. Um, these two brands are quite expensive though, considering what they are. And you can buy a great big bag of psyllium husk that doesn't come with any kind of um, flavoring. And you could mix it in with the fruit juice, I guess, or it says here that you can use it for keto baking. So the um, bulk forming laxatives must be mixed with plenty of water. If you try and take them because you, you find it boring to drink that much water, if you try and take them without enough water, then you will run into other kinds of problems. So that's something that you must bear in mind. I think we've got to the end of this presentation now, and I wish you all happy pooing. So if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe and give us a thumbs up and all of that YouTube jazz. The link to the group is in the description box below. We are now on Facebook, MeWe and Twitter. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much for listening.